In this project video, I show how to create two ballistic shields modeled after the BZT-75, including further optimization on weight and cost. So let's get started. I think we can drop it down about two pounds now that I've actually molded and worked with the stuff once we get the ballistic test done. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the channel. So today we are talking about ballistic shields. I made two of these, and each of them cost right around $60 to make. The rifle rated one being a bit more expensive. So I got a set done for about $140, right around there. I'll give you guys the exact uh, cost and where to get the materials to produce these. So generally, I don't like splitting up the ballistic tests from the builds that I do. But in this case, I kind of had to because this was a much more complicated uh, build. You know, it's still fairly easy, but I ran into a few issues, tried a few different things out. So I figured, let's go and s drop the build video this week, and you'll get the actual ballistic text next week. And we'll see how close my estimates are. I also have some scrap material that these were made out of that I'm going to make up small optimization plates. So we'll cover that towards the end of the video because I think we can get these even lighter and potentially even cheaper, which is really cool. If we could get like a sub $50, sub 10 pound pistol rated uh, plate, shield, that would be amazing, right? But we'll have to go out and actually test it to see if that's the case. So if you're from the future, you can just go down into the comment section of the top pinned comment will be the ballistic test but you know if you are following around following along on my channel then you'll just see this you know the update on this next week I'm trying to upload every Thursday you know from here on in for a while so all right well let's uh, cover the measurements what materials I used how I molded and fabricated these stuff if uh, you're new here make sure to like share and subscribe and let's get started boys Alright, so first let's talk about the pattern I made, right? So this is 13 inches across on the top and 24 inches at the biggest point on the bottom and is 16 inches tall. What I like about this shield is it covers your upper torso pretty, pretty awesome, right? Your shoulders it actually can be maybe a little bit wider on the top right here to cover up the shoulders completely. But for the most part, that's that covers most of your upper body and it's a lighter shield so it's easier to kind of move and manipulate around uh, doorways and whatnot this the uh, the full measurements are 16 inches up 24 inches across and 13 inches along the top right so the edges I what I did was I got the full 24 and then I measured uh, out an inch from the, the edge and up an inch so and that, and then I drew a curb, trying to keep them consistent on both sides. This one was a half an inch of a curb, so I measured out from the outside half an inch and down half an inch and drew a curb like that. Right, so just to let you guys know where I got those measurements from. But yeah, all right, let's talk about the uh, materials. And of course you can pause it just to get an idea of all the measurements. Also, huge shout out to Devin for both suggesting I look at the BZT-75 as well as helping with the measurements. This may very well be my favorite shield design. So uh, thanks for that, bud. So both shields are made up of mostly the same material, and that's a quarter inch piece of polycarbonate sheet and 18 ounce woven roving fiberglass. The estimates on stopping power versus the layers of fiberglass needed come from experiments done by both Mr. Turtle and Brad on my Discord, as well as some of the tests you've seen on this channel. I'll include links on where I bought this material as I found it for pretty cheap. So first I started by tracing and cutting out the polycarbonate sheet, using a jigsaw with a wood blade. An acrylic blade or a plastic cut blade would have been better as it gives a cleaner cut on the plastic. After cutting and deburring the edges, it was time to bend the polycarbonate. Now the BZT has a bend in the middle of the shield. This gives a more dynamic shape for hand strap placement than just a flat shield. 
So first I tried to bend it with nothing more than a steel rod placed over the center and some angle iron underneath, with also using a blowtorch to try to assist with the molding. The main problem with this was that the polycarbonate was simply just too stiff and the metal rod was just far too bendy. Alright, so I ran into a problem using just this rod. As I was compressing it on the sides of the polycarbonate, it would flex too much. So it wasn't bending it properly. So what I ended up doing was took the angle iron and cut it right in half because it was longer than a piece of polycarbonate I'm trying to work with, right? And cut some little metal things out of a uh, bar stock and check out a uh, now now that's a weld right there look at that oh yeah that's a thing of beauty Instagram rate my welds right <laughs> this is a uh, I don't actually have a welder here so I just use this steel stick JB weld stuff but it gets the job done really well and so now the idea is and the reason why I did this I should mention I'll show a little clip of the problems I was running into, obviously, because you have two angled pieces of... Because one of the problems with using two angle irons like this was that, you know, getting a good clamp on it to get it to compress down because, you know, you're putting a V inside of another one with a piece of plastic laid. It just wasn't balancing right, and I just couldn't get it to clamp properly. So this method now because I get a nice square to clamp onto right on each side I think will work much better at least that's the hope so let's go ahead and try this out so this method worked great using a few clamps and a blowtorch I was able to slowly form the polycarbonate into the shape I wanted the only real problem is when you're using an open flame on plastic it's very easy to burn it if you're not too careful. That's why I mostly focused on heating the metal and not the plastic. Honestly a heat gun would have worked much better. Now the second method I used I decided to try and mold the plastic cold with no heating. Polycarbonate is a remarkable plastic in that it can be bent on a brake press without much worry of it cracking. So using this method requires far more clamping pressure and time however. But if I was trying to make a fully transparent shield, I would use this method to prevent any burn marks. Alright, so they're both done molding. So this is the one that we use the blowtorch to assist with. You can see kind of the areas where it heated up too much. Um, some of it was before I really uh, used the angle too. This was the same piece. And so some of that was present before where the heat was just left on one area for too long. Uh, but where it actually dug in, that was from the angle, right? Now this was easier to clamp and to form into shape. However, we were still able to do it with no heat, even though it's a very thick piece of polycarbonate. A couple things though, the angle started to bend, especially on the second one here, right? Because there was no heat to assist uh, the plastic being formed and so what ended up happening is at the very edges you can see it's indented really well kind of at the angle we want but as you get progressively closer to the center because they bowed down and bowed up as it was being clamped and forced together there was no contact on the plastic in the middle what then ended up happening was the middle is significantly flatter than both edges this isn't a huge deal because it's still at about the angle I wanted. I could have gone for a little bit more, but it still fits better onto the arm like it should. So if I was going to do it again, I would definitely fortify that mold when it was clamping, you know, and try to find other places to clamp at. But overall, it, it actually worked really well for a first time. So, all right, let's get on to laminating. We're going to be using 18 ounce Robit Roven woven roving <laughs> for most of the composite work mainly because it's cheap it's strong 
and I know around 20 layers of it will be like level 3A. So one of them will be designated just to be level 3A and the other one will be rifle rated. So let's get started on laminating boys. So using the original pattern, I traced and cut out 42 pieces out of 10 yards of fabric. There might have been a more optimized way of placing the pattern to get more pieces, however, but this is what I got. So I decided to take 18 layers and save that aside for the pistol rated one, and the other 16 would be for the rifle one. I then cut out 4 layers of some S grade fiberglass cloth that I had so I could bump the rifle rated one up to 20 layers. Now for lamination I use this cheap Bondo polyester resin that you can get at any hardware store. I made small batches of about 9 ounces at a time so I could take my time and be more careful at working the resin into the fibers. This fabric is really like a sponge so work in small batches and try to work out any air pockets that you come across. I used about one and a half cans of resin per shield, so if you're following along you'll have to buy two. So I want to show a bit more of the lamination footage to help those that might try this. I would apply resin on each layer with a brush until the fibers were completely saturated. Then I would add another layer of fabric and smooth and press it down with the spreader. This was to ensure less void spots and buildup of resin in certain areas. Also, I want to mention that I was laminating to the top of the polycarbonate. I initially started by sanding the polycarbonate to apply each layer, but as you'll see, the polycarbonate ended up completely delaminating, so we had to go a slightly different direction with it. So after curing, the polycarbonate popped right off the surface of the fiberglass. I was honestly surprised that the resin didn't stick to the plastic at all. I have seen this though before when trying to make bulletproof glass, so I decided to trace and trim the fiberglass back down to the size it's needed to be and go and pick up some construction adhesive to reattach the polycarbonate. Alright, so I went ahead and trimmed these up. Um, I used a grinding disc or a cutting disc and a Dremel to do most of the work for cutting it. So this is kind of what they look like now, right? We trimmed off all the excess, finally got into the shape. There's a few impurities on the surface that's got to be sanded and buffed down. For any loose fibers that don't have a lot of resin, I just took the shears and cut them off, right? I didn't really uh, stop to record this part. I was just trying to jam out, but here's how both of them ended up looking, right? Now that they've been trimmed up, their weight, check this out. So for the rifle, the one's going to be for the rifle rating, we're looking at six pounds, 15 ounces. And for the other one, we're looking at six pounds, 11 ounces. That's without the polycarbonate. Now the polycarbonate itself for both of them weigh two pounds, 13 ounces. So we're looking at about nine to, well, nine pounds and some change, pretty much. Uh, yeah, right around there. So with the addition of the handle and the adhesive that I'm going to use to glue the polycarbon on, we're probably looking at both of them hitting right around 10 pounds and a few ounces. Not bad, man. For the pistol rated one, that's in line with what I wanted. For the rifle rated one, I was hoping to kind of get it a little bit lighter initially because the addition of these ceramics is going to be, you know, it's going to be pretty heavy. Now for the Adhesive. This is what I decided to do in order to attach the polycarbonate. We're going to uh, we're going to use this Loctite PLA Max. Now Loctite has a few different adhesives like this. There's like three times the strength, four times the strength, eight times the strength. I went ahead and just got two tubes of the the strongest one they have, the Max Bond. It says it works for fiberglass, it works with ceramics, it works with steel. I specifically got this one because it just seems like everything that I might ever attach to it, this will work. And it's their claims of how strong this stuff is, is like, all right, well, we'll give it a go and see if we can actually adhere the piece of polycarbonate to the back of this, right? Um, the only problem with this one over the other Loctite stuff is this is like $10 a tube. So this is actually probably one of their most expensive adhesives. 
I have other caulks up here that I was going to try, the Vulcan 116. I did it for some ceramic tiles years ago. And that stuff actually works really amazing, right? But I figure we're going to give this one a go. Never used it before, so let's see. Because I, I want, I don't want that polycarbonate to pop off the back. So I want the strongest stuff, right? Okay, so next is just I'm going to be cleaning it until I get the edges and the sides ready because I'm going to end up painting it at the end so and sealing it but uh yeah it's it's come together and I'm hoping this will work I'm gonna probably attach the polycarbonate here soon and I'll show you guys that and I'll show you a little bit of the trimming and finishing work just to make it look prettier we attach the handles and then finally the ceramic strike paste for one and paint up the other all right let's get started So I spread the construction adhesive over the surfaces of both the polycarbonate and the fiberglass and clamped them into place. I really liked working with this stuff. Just if you do, make sure to wear a respirator when applying this over such a large area as the fumes are quite nasty. I would go on to use this stuff to attach the handles as well. For the main handle, I used a simple trowel that I bought from for $2 at the hardware store. I also added some simple straps that my wife sewed some buckles onto for the forearm support. I'll go over the exact location of the handles at the end of the video. And so finally for the rifle shield, I used two pieces of Cornell Ivory porcelain floor tiles that I traced and cut out on a cheap ceramic wet saw that I bought for the Jeep build. I then attached them using the same construction adhesive as we did for the polycarbonate and the handles. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, a couple things for the hand placement on the inside. I would actually drop it down some. I would come down here. I went up five inches and then two inches in and tried to keep it in line with how the slope of the edge was, right? I would actually move it down a little bit more. This was mentioned to me by one of my friends because that way it kind of shit sits up higher on the shoulder and protects it rather than being down kind of low however it worked pretty well man like with the straps and everything so this is the rifle rated one that i attached with the same construction adhesive one of the problems i ran into that that i didn't really show was because of the bend of the polycarbonate uh certain areas were uneven from the slope right and when you're attaching a hard uh, ceramic like this uh, there was some gaps so I had to really clamp it down with that adhesive but it seems to hold together really well I actually really like that stuff man it um I took some tests I made some tests trying to break the polycarbonate free once it was already adhered on the pistol rated one and I could not get it free so I think it will stand up against ballistics don't know for certain but I think it will so the uh, rifle rated one came out to being 21 pounds, right around there. And the pistol one was uh, 10 pounds, 11 ounces. So the resin, this stuff, uh, this construction adhesive adds quite a bit of weight. And of course, I already knew that the ceramic was going to add like 10 pounds because porcelain is very heavy, right? Each of those sheets that I cut from were 8 pounds by themselves. So the fact that it was only like the addition of 10 and some change isn't bad. But yeah. The rifle one's not too bad, however my favorite has to be the pistol one, just because it's, you know, like right at 10 pounds, and uh, that fits perfectly. Like, I really like that one. So, so, final thoughts and things to consider. I don't know if, I mean, there's a possibility we could just get rid of the polycarbonate. I won't know until I test it. That's why I prefer to test before I make the video entirely, but there was a lot to cover in this, as you guys saw. But yeah, I think we could maybe get rid of the polycarbonate. Um, I have a bunch of the scrap left over that I'm going to chop up and do some samples, just seeing with the ceramic strike face and 18 layers, will it be able to stop like the uh, M M80, M193, 7.62 by 39, you know, kind of the classic level three threats. I don't know for certain because I haven't really tested it. This has been 
based off of other people's and some of my other previous I've worked more with like S grade fiberglass than woven roving uh, I wish I could have done both of them at like pretty much 20 layers because that was the main estimate I was coming up with so these optimization plates will really kind of reveal how thin and how light you could get it because if you could take out the polycarbonate that's a dropping two pounds immediately right and with shields you don't really have to worry about back face deformation because it's not touching your skin only really in the forearm area right and one of the main reasons why i'm doing this is the idea of spaced armor to begin with so if a bullet makes it through the shield it'll be heavily decelerated so in conjunction with an actual sapa plate kind of a traditional plate carrier sort of thing could we stop something that's even scarier that normally just the vest itself couldn't or the shield couldn't because the fact it's making it through the material and starting to tumble that was the main reason why we even explored this um, and I'm excited to test that out so I'm going to be making a sap of plate and testing something really scary to see if kinda in conjunction with the shield plus a vest insert would actually work now as far as painting it up you know obviously I chose if I was working over Easter I thought what better time than to do kind of a crusader like theme you know I used the Cairo which is the thing that I have tattooed on my forearm and I went with the Orthodox cross right I think they turned out beautiful I wish I, I should have spent a little bit more time cleaning up the edges but you can see I sealed it with that max bond or the PLA stuff right the construction piece. I did it around the edges too just to kind of clean up and it makes a nice smooth surface so yeah all right guys I'm really excited to go out and test these out uh, if you're new here make sure to uh, go ahead and subscribe we're getting up there uh, this is what the second Thursday in a row that I've uploaded and that's the goal is to upload every Thursday for a while moving forward um, you can also find me on Instagram I try to kind of you know showcase some of this stuff I'll put a link in there for it of course I'll put a link for all this material so you know where to buy it and uh, where you can get it for the cheapest like I found it I also have a patreon now if you guys want to support me over there I'm not gonna just sit here and beg for money but I appreciate every little bit every little bit helps alright guys I will see you in the next one which will be out at the range shooting these I'm really excited about it. all right guys take care all right, well, it's the end of the video, guys. It was great having you. Make sure to like, share, subscribe. Suggest things you want to see me. A lot of my suggestions come from you guys, so, you know, it's always fun. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. You're a little lower. I know you hit high.